Hello everyone. I am Reverend Gadlin Arthur Chance, pastor of the Holistic Transformation Ministries at Louisville. This is a branch work of the Calvaro Deliverance Tabernacle under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I am also a special education teacher, having taught for 34 years of my life. Bridging the Gaps will be aired on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Saturday at 8 p.m. The program is expected to keep you at the edge of your seat. Join us as we deal with issues relating to the stages of early childhood to adolescence. A pleasant good evening to you viewers. Uh, well, as usual, it's a pleasure for me to spend this time in your presence. I just want to remind you uh, that on this program we are bridging the gap because we don't want a generation that doesn't know their God. I know uh, the children are on holiday, holidays right now. I hope you are having a wonderful time with them, spending some time with them because throughout the term they are with their teachers and their pairs. But I hope that uh, we could find some time to gel with them, to bond with them, to spend some time. You know that they will see you uh, in the real sense as a friend, yes. But um, with the respect that is due unto a parent or a primary caregiver, you know, a guardian. At this time, I want us to seek God's face for them just for a few minutes because God is able to do anything. Father, we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for your grace. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God, and we exalt you. We thank you for the privilege of being your servant. We thank you for the privilege that you have given us so that we could understand the mystery of the gospel of Christ. Today, I ask that you take full control of whatever is being discussed here today. Father, your word will not return unto you void. I pray that you're going to touch those that are listening, that you will bring clarity of thought. I come against the spirit of doubt. Father, I pray that you're going to touch uh, the children. Lord, I commit them into your hands. The, uh, all our young people, Father, I commit them into your hands. You take charge of their lives. You use them for your honor and your glory. Cause them to understand that you love them and that you want the best for them. And cause uh, parents, mothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, Lord, uh, caregivers, teachers, guardians, cause them to understand that parenting is something that God has ordained them for. And I pray that you will uh, help them to understand that in seeking your face, you will give them a better, uh, a better way of raising the children. So Father, bless everyone today. I commit everything into your hands. You be the informer today. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Again, it's a pleasure for me to be in your company. Last week, we looked at the life of uh, Moses. Uh, well, we, we, we stopped where he was. Uh, he was just a, a young boy, a, a young, a babe, and his mother had hid him. I want for those who were not, um, who were not privy to that uh, episode, I want to just go back a little. Uh, on it, just for a few minutes, we spoke about um, Jochebed, his mother. One of the things that I did not say is that the meaning of Jochebed is Jehovah is my glory. So it, it means that Jochebed, who was Moses' mother, she always uh, spent time in prayer 
because Jehovah was her, it was her glory. She believed in the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and she depended upon him. You know, she believed that he could do a lot more than we could ask or think, and that is based on our faith. We understand that. The Bible tells us that. Okay? So, um, we talked about uh, the Pharaoh at the time, that he felt that the children of Israel, they were multiplying. They were too successful. You know, the devil doesn't like God's people to succeed, and he doesn't like... Uh, God's godly heritage to go forward, but we need to protect our uh, God's godly heritage, and I'm referring to our children, and it could refer to us too, because there were times in our lives when we were children, you know, what our parents didn't know then, we are more privileged today because there is more information, you know, so as I said, the devil's desire is to destroy God's godly heritage. Remember the Bible says that children are an heritage of the Lord. Remember it also says in the psalm, and I keep saying it almost every week, that they are like arrows in the hands of a mighty man. So we as parents and caregivers and pastors and teachers, you know, guardians, we have a responsibility to God's charges, to our children, okay? To God's heritage or charges. We have a responsibility to nurture them in the, 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 uh, as God would want us to nurture them. And in order for us to do that, we've got to seek God's face. We've got to know the word of God. We've got to study the word of God. We've got to meditate on the word of God so that we would be informed with what God wants us to do for his heritage. Okay? So we looked at Moses and we said that um, the Pharaoh wanted to destroy all the young boys so he has sent he sent out a decree that the young children once they were male they should be thrown into the nile river but jochebed uh, looked at her child you know she looked at moses and he was a goodly child the bible says and when we looked at the meaning of uh goodly it meant uh it, he was attractive you know, he was good looking. You know, he looked, he, he, he was different. She had Miriam and she had Aaron, but Moses was different. No doubt she loved all her children, but Moses was different. And perhaps it was the relationship that she had with God that, 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 that allowed the spirit of God within her to tell her, no, this child is not an ordinary child. This child has a, a divine purpose that, 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 that would um, change the history of things. This child would be the one that would bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. This child is the one that would... No, she didn't know all that. I'm just talking on. I'm talking forward because you see God does things in a way that he sees the end before the beginning because he is the God uh, uh, that is omnipotent he's almighty so even when as parents we don't see what our children will become remember God would have already seen that Remember, he's the one that would have made us, you understand? And even the children, uh, we need to understand again, as I said before, that the parents are just uh, the, the, the vehicles that the Lord uses in order to bring them to the earth. But the ultimate father would be God the Father, you understand? So God would have already known what Moses would have done. Remember, these things were spoken of even before Moses was born because Abraham was told that his, um, his generations will end up in, um, they will go to a land and they would become slaves and later on they will be delivered. All that was recorded already. And God is a God that would prophesy everything right down to Revelation. And that's why we need to understand that the word is true. It's the only real truth that there is. It's, it's referred to as absolute truth, okay? So we said that, um, say, uh, not Sarah, sorry, Jochebed, she looked at her son and she knew that this child could not be destroyed like that. And as I said before, the Lord was ministering to her. 
So she knew that she had to defy the king, the pharaoh at the time, and she decided, okay, um, he wants to destroy these children. I'm going to hide my son. So she hid her son while other children were being tossed into the Nile River. And she hid her son until she was not able to hide him anymore. And she decided, okay, I cannot hide my child anymore. And we will go on to that later on. But I want to look at uh, what, something that I said last week. We as, how, how, what, what does that say for us? As parents, as caregivers, as guardians, you know, uh, we need to understand that our children are, uh, have a divine destiny. God made them with a purpose, each one of them. The purpose would be different, of course, and they have different gifts. So every child that is birth, you know, to a mother, a mother and a father, you know, we, we need to understand that God has a purpose for their lives because everything that God makes is good. And we live in, in the dispensation of grace, you know. So um, our children, uh, we, we're not saying that they are cursed children, whoever they come from, you know, they, they, we are redeemed from self and sin through the death of Jesus Christ. So we believe that all our children are good children and that there is a good future for each child. So we don't make comparisons and decide that, okay, this child is John Doe's daughter. So John Doe's daughter is not going to amount to anything. But um, John King's daughter is going to amount to something. No. God loves each one of them. It doesn't matter how they look. It doesn't matter how they smell. It doesn't matter uh, what their, their surnames are. God has a plan for each life. And we have to be careful because, you see, I'm saying it so because it may not be the biological mother or, or father that would have to do the work in the life of the child. It may be somebody else. It may be the teacher who would uh, uh, do that, who would nurture that child. They may not be getting it at home, but the impact, you know, that you could make in the life of a child, even within the school system, at the church, you know, as a leader at the church, as a member of the church, in the community community sometimes God would allow somebody else to impact the child's life positively or the young person's life positively it does not have to be from baby stage but as they grow older God may put somebody in place in their lives to assist them to fulfill the divine purpose that God has for their lives so we go back to Moses and um, we said that she hid the child and then she realized I can't hide this child no more because this child is growing and the king, uh, the pharaoh has sent out a decree that they ought to be killed. And she decided, you know what, I can't hide this child no more. I'm going to release this child. Remember what I said last week. We have to raise our children because we're not just talking about Moses, you know, we're talking about Moses, yes. But we want to link it with what we are doing today with our children. Remember I said that we have to take the responsibility to nurture our children in the ways of the Lord. So we have got to guide them. We're not training them based on the standards of society. We are training them based on the standards of the word of God, what God says concerning them. So we spoke last, last week about uh, exposing them to the immoral, to the immodest, to the ungodly. We don't want to do that because remember they are not our children. They are God's children. So we're not raising them according to the standards of society. Because God is their manufacturer. And because God is their manufacturer, he would set the precedent concerning how they should be raised. And sometimes the reason why we have problems is because we allow society to raise them. They go to a school and because they are in school and the teacher says, oh yes, this child has, I'm not talking about every teacher. You have to know what you want for your child, uh, especially believers. You ought to make sure that your children do not get involved in the things that are not of God. Yes. 
School is there to train them academically, and some of them have gifts. And then, you know, a teacher may decide, okay, this child has a lot of gifts. This child looks like she could dance, so let's get her involved in carnival. And she could be the queen of the band, or he could be the queen of the parents. We've got to be careful. Guardians, we've got to be careful. We have to make sure that as, as parents, we set the stage for the lives of our children. We do not want to expose them to that which is ungodly, okay? Right? So you don't allow them to go into the carnival ban and they're naked in their bikini and they have a wine and a jam and they, you understand what I'm saying? Don't expose them to the volunteers. Another thing I spoke about is the cell phone. The two-year-old does not have to have it. Not because other children are having it or because the child is crying for it. It means that the child has to have it. No. You have a responsibility as the adult to raise your child well. To raise your child so that your child will be able to achieve that which God has set for them to achieve. or For him or for her to achieve. Although we feel that uh, in, the, in this millennium, they refer to them as the millennium uh, generation. They, they feel that they have an entitlement and we're talking about the bigger ones as well. I am supposed to have this and I'm supposed to have this. It's about their desires. It's about their needs. They see these things advertised on the television and on the computer and wherever and they feel, well, I'm supposed to have that because others have that. No, we have to be careful. We have to be careful of what we expose them to. They want, they, they want to enjoy a certain amount of uh, a gratification. I, I could almost use the word ecstasy, you know. And they on the cell phone all day. They're on the tablet all day. And it becomes very addictive. Sometimes I, I wonder, I think I saw it somewhere where they're very... Um, that hormone dopamine you know what dopamine when they um when you take when those people who are involved in drug use sometimes when they take their first um bit of drug whether it be let's do, uh, perhaps cocaine our children are doing that cocaine with the grace by the grace of god hallelujah uh cocaine suppose they take their first <coughs> their, their first pull of it you know i remember uh sitting in a class and they spoke about the the hormone that is that is um secreted into the into the, the 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 system when that happens you know so they get a high they get a high when they um when they take their first pull and then the feeling is so good because of that hormone dopamine that they try to get that first that feeling again and it is it is said that the first good feeling that you get when you take that drug you don't ever get it so they always sometimes they use more in order to because they want to get back that feeling so when they use the same amount, they don't get that. So they will increase because they're looking for that first feeling, you know. And I was studying <clears throat> somewhere there the day where they were talking about the, um, the cell phone and the tablet and the children and the young people on it. And it is believed that the same hormone is secreted into their system. So they, became, they become addicted because they're looking for the gratification that they got first. And they're looking for gratification every time they, they go on. They want more and more, you know. It's the same effect as uh, the, the effects of drugs on their body. So they become addicted to it. So we have to make sure that we assist them. And we've got to remember, in go Google it, go you look for it, that there is this blue light on these um Th these technological gadgets, you know, that makes them believe, even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, even if it's 11 o'clock in the night, it makes them believe that it's daytime. So our children are on the gadget down into the morning and they're not even realizing it's time for them to go to sleep, right? So many of our children are so tired that when they go to school, they cannot perform. Or their brains are so tired that when teachers are talking to them in school, they are angry. No fault of theirs, some of them, because they are allowed to do it. Because mommy, daddy, guardian, whoever, the caregiver, is not controlling its use. 
We have a responsibility to them. They are not mature enough to know what they, they, they should or shouldn't do. As I asked uh, before last week, are they paying the rent for your house? Are they footing the bills of the household? No, they are not. So it's not what they want to do. It's yes, some, we give them a level of... Uh, of what independence but we have to know how much to give them based on their age based on their level of development you know i i want to talk a, just a little bit about uh for those of us who are in the area of probably psychology or even education you know uh we we, we know about piages stages of development you know children are not able to do everything from two years so we don't expose them to everything and expose that they will do well in everything from two years three years four years five years the development is a process and we have to understand now not every parent will know that but as teachers we were exposed to that as those you know some of the some of us were trained in the area so we help we guide you know we advise parents we advise caregivers we advise them as to what they should do some of them wouldn't take it but it is our responsibility god wants us to do it you know, PRJ talks about the sensory motto stage where when, when, when that, that is from birth, when the child is just concerned about what is in front of them at the moment. So if you give them a cell phone, you know, at, 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 at that age, they, they're just really into the cell phone. They like the, the, the pictures flashing and they see Peppa Pig and whatnot. You know, some of them, they're talking, um, they, they, they're talking with an accent. Previously, we used to look at uh, when we talk about Asperger's syndrome, and, and, and that is on the autism spectrum. We would we would listen for one of the symptoms. We would listen for the okay, if a child is born into big one, never traveled anywhere, and was never exposed to anybody in America who has this accent, then we expect that the child will talk like a Tobagonian. But now our children in our homes who are not exposed are talking uh, for, like the, with an accent because of the, the, the cell phone, Peppa Pig, and I can't remember the names of the others, but they spend so much time on it that they are talking just like them. We need to understand that our children are going through stages of development. And PRJ doesn't only talk about the sensory motor stage, but he goes on to the uh, pre-operational stage. And that will be from about two years to five years, you know, where they talk about things that may be just beyond their immediate experience. Yet they are not, easy, they, they are not able to reason logically. So when they are exposed to too much, they can't reason these things, so they make bad choices. And then Piaget speaks about the concrete operational stage, you know, where they, they're a little higher in age, perhaps six, seven years, uh, and every, things that they do are limited to reasoning, but, um, uh, but just about the concrete real life experiences. Our children are not developed to deal with the host of information that they are exposed to on the phones and on the, on the tablet, on the internet. And then they may go to the, uh, they, they go according to PRJ to the formal operational stage at some 12 plus where they now doing some abstract thinking. But if we were to check the DSM-5, I think it is now, that book that will, uh, tell you of uh, different diagnosis and that kind of thing you, we would we would we would we would get from it that um our children are not able to to reason now there will be a difference in children mind you right children will develop differently based on the exposure they experience biology and all that but then there would be some, some would not be able to do anything on to, to not not to do anything to reason to, to make logical decision to make right choices to problem solve they wouldn't be able to do that in a mature way until some of them are 20 something and even into 30 years you see the problem that we have uh, when we expose our children to so much? 
And when they make choices and they decide, when they are, we, we call them rude and they decide, mommy, I big enough at 12 years, I big enough to go to the fet down the road. And what is wrong if I wear my dress with my, uh, my thing, my, my top with my breast outside? And what is wrong if I wear pants with piece of my bottom outside? Mommy, that's the trend. I'm big enough for that. As parents and caregivers and as leaders, we've got to be careful. The Bible tells us that uh, after Jochebed realized that her child, she hid her child. Okay, she hid her child from the world. She hid her child from what was taking place at the time. And I'm saying we need to hide our children from all these immoral things that they are exposed to. We need to make the choices for some of them. If we realize that they reach a certain age and they're not making right choices, we need to talk to them in a very loving way. We need to guide them. But one of the things that we understand with Jochebed is that later on, when she realized that she couldn't hide her child anymore, she made sure that she built a, a little... We, let me refer to it as a little boat and she make sure that water couldn't get into it because although she was giving up her child she decided that she will protect the child still so she put the child in the boat but she set her daughter Miriam to look at the child sometimes we hide our children for a long time in, in fact okay we are possessive we we guide them and then they reach to the age of probably 18 19 and society says that they are mature and we have uh, we do our best to keep them uh, under our standards and then after a time we're not able to do it again because sometimes they pull from us sometimes their peers pull them sometimes they just want to go out there as believers i want to tell us today that we ought not to be afraid we saw what moses did we saw what jochebed did with moses she decided okay i cannot I uh, continue to hide this child, but I'm going to put this child in the Nile River. And she made sure that she uh, had a, a view of things that was happening in his life. So sometimes we have to release our children. When they reach a certain age, we have to release them. But we continue to pray. We continue to keep a connect with prayer, a spiritual connect. And I'm speaking specifically about children who may be 18, 19, 20 years, you know, and, and even more. And they want to come, come away from your covering, come out of your covering. In other words, they want to go into the world, they want to do certain things. We have to release them as Jochebed released Moses, but we pray. And one of the things we realize is that uh, the Pharaoh's daughter went to the river the Pharaoh's daughter went to the river and she, uh, she, got, she saw the child and she had compassion on the child. Sometimes we release them and when we release them, we continue to pray. And there is somebody out there that will have compassion on the child. You see, God is still going to work because our prayers are alive. Hallelujah. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So we release them, yes, and we pray that God will keep them. Sometimes we can't change them, but God allows somebody out there to have compassion on them. And I just want us to remember that Jochebed uh, ended up taking charge of her child. So God used somebody in the world to have compassion on her child, to bring back the child to her. Sometimes our children have to go through experiences out there. Okay, and then eventually God will bring them back to us. I want to continue with this next week. May God richly bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and give you peace until he comes. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. I am Reverend Gadlin Arthur Chance, pastor of the Holistic Transformation Ministries at Louisville. This is a branch work of the Calvary Deliverance Tabernacle under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I am also a special education teacher having taught for 34 years of my life. Bridging the gaps will be aired on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Saturday at 8 p.m. The program is expected to keep you at the edge of your seat. Join us as we deal with issues relating to the stages of early childhood to adolescence.